Character creation has been around since Dungeons & Dragons launched in 1974. Obviously this was a pen and paper version of the game and not a computer, however this would pave the way for the first character creator in Pool of Radiance which launched in 1988, with its character creation and customizable options. Hi there, and welcome to Deconstructing the Game, I'm Mike, and in the very first video on my very first channel, I'll be looking at character creation in some of my favourite games from the past decade or so, comparing these games to each other, and more importantly, seeing how I feel they hold up against Cyberpunk 2077. We'll be jumping into Oblivion, Fallout 3, Skyrim, Fallout 4, The Outer Worlds, and making a surprise appearance will be Saints Row 2 before moving on to Cyberpunk 2077. Some of these games are RPG, and others have RPG elements without actually being a classic RPG, but if this confuses you, then I guess we know where the next video is going to. So, let's get started. If you're anything like me, character creation takes up way too much of your time when jumping into that brand new RPG. Selecting what perks you want and selecting those attributes can really tip the scale of how you play the game, but what takes up most of my time is making my character actually look good. My very first experience with character creation was with Bethesda's Elder Scrolls Oblivion way back in 2006 on the PlayStation 3. I remember being simply awestruck because A, I had never actually played an RPG before and B, I had never actually played a game that required you to create a character to start off with, so these were nice changes for me. There's no denying that the graphics for Oblivion were definitely showing their age at this point, but the amount of choice you had back in the day was pretty impressive. What has become pretty standard for Bethesda Studios is that in most of their game creators, or your character creator suites, you have the option to choose the style of body part you want, and then move that body part around the X, Y, and Z axis of your face or body, changing the height, width, depth of that part of your body, making it larger or smaller in some cases. We see this with a good chunk of Bethesda games, and it's pretty good because if you're good enough and you have an eye for detail, you can pretty much replicate someone you know or yourself. To an extent, of course. In fact, the number of permutations for the characters that you can create are pretty much, they're, they're insane, they're huge. So huge, in fact, that you won't believe the maths, but we'll discuss that later on. For now, let's take time to admire the graphics of these games and see how far they've come since 2006, way up to 2015, when Fallout 4 was released. It's pretty amazing how technology advances. And I've sped up the video a little bit to skim through the character customization because I guess at this point we all know what the sliders look like. The most up to date character creator that I've used that hasn't been Cyberpunk 2077 is The Outer Worlds by Obsidian, and they were the guys that made Fallout New Vegas. Graphics wise, the game pops and has a really unique color palette, and the character creator is pretty much as the same in depth as Fallout 3 and 4 and Skyrim as well. You can select the body part you want, change the position, you know, up, down, left, right, X, Y, Z, you can do it. That's fine. And I should mention that in these games that there's a decent amount of hair, beard styles, and colours to go with your character as well. In some instances, you can put a beard on a female character. And for choice, I'd say Skyrim has the best option for character customization. However, with the graphics being dated at this point, the outer worlds look better, and it has the same amount of options to change your character. The kicker with the Outer Worlds though is that you're constantly locked in a first person perspective and you can't actually see your character in any cutscenes. So yep, yeah, we've all spent way too much time creating the perfect character and then you find out you can't actually see yourself in anything and cutscenes. So yeah, that, that happens to me quite a lot. Skyrim you can see yourself in third person but the best place to admire your character is probably Fallout 4 because you can actually see yourself in third person if you want to and you have the added bonus of seeing yourself in dialogue options, which I thought was a nice touch. Okay, so let's get on to the surprise guest, which is Saints Row 2. And this blows Bethesda game out of the water by a long shot for the character creation. It's insane. Saints Row 2 has the most customizable options right from the get-go. And what surprised me about the game is it released 10 days before Fallout 3 back in 2008. The graphics are cartoony and dated, but options are absolutely insane. What makes it even better is that Saints Row 2, in Saints Row 2, you don't have you don't have third person, um, you know, the option, you're just locked into third person. You also have the added bonus of having seen your character in full-on cutscenes. So you can see the character you've made in full-blown cutscenes, and it's pretty impressive for the technology back in the day and for how old it is. 
And if you're interested in the maths behind the permutations of the other games, then I've got the information right here. And I have to give credit to Reddit user Afortify for doing the work of the Skyrim um, classes and customizable options for the races. Because without them posting the method of the calculations or how they did that, uh, re revealing these numbers to you would be absolutely impossible. So I was able to calculate the permutations for Fallout 3, Saints Row, The Outer Worlds and Cyberpunk 2077. I decided to ignore Oblivion um, because that would have taken ages. Skyrim was already done and Fallout 4 was actually inquantifiable because the sliders don't exist. It's simply an analogue movement of the stick to change the part in your body. So I couldn't calculate that. But at the top of the leaderboard uh, for permutations we have Saints Row 2 with a number that is essentially a Google number, uh, Fallout 3, which is a November Decillion number, Skyrim with a Sex Decillion number, uh, The Outer Worlds with a Decillion number, and Cyberpunk 2077 with also a Decillion number. Um, I will post the actual figures in the description below if you want to have a look at that. Um, but here in those numbers, you're probably thinking there's absolutely no way there's no way that all these permutations exist, but they do. And it's a little bit disingenuous because, you know, is changing one point in the slider creating a new character? Is that a new character? And because the Reddit user used the number of sliders and the number of options on the sliders as their um, criteria for making the permutation algorithm, then that's what I had to go with. I had to keep everything, all the parameters straight across the board. So that's what I did, and those were the numbers that it turned out. So seeing those possible numbers and outcomes, it made me question whether I was wrong about Cyberpunk 2077, because in my opinion, it didn't have as many customizable options that I would like to see. Um, I don't know if I was getting my hopes up on that one, but uh, there's definitely a few things that I would change, and there's definitely a few things that you know people might like about the, the option that they've gone with for character customization. We'll discuss that why just now. Okay guys, so let's talk about the cyberpunk character creation. Okay, straight off the bat, I'm not going to hold any punches. I was really disappointed because like many of you, this was the first thing I saw when I started the game. Now, granted, the graphics look good. They are really, really nice graphics depending on what kind of console you have. If you're playing on PC, all the more power to you because you're really going to see the benefit of that on your screen. However, when it comes to character creation and customization, it is severely lacking. What is it lacking? Well, for starters, all of your options for your face, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your ears, they're all prefab items and what i mean by prefab is that they have already selected the shape and the size of those items the depth the length the height wherever they are in the body they are pre-selected prefabricated so you have no um you've got no choice of where that goes on your body it's just as it is some people might like that some people might like the streamlined variation of the creation i know a lot of people who are hardcore RPG gamers and RPG style gamers are going to be pretty disappointed and I know I am. As well as that, there's only so many colours for hair, beards, nails, skin, all that kind of thing. You really should have been given either an RGB slider to select these colours or a colour wheel to select these uh, colours on your body, whether it be your skin or your hair, because it's Night City, it's Cyberpunk. Why can't or why shouldn't you be able to color your skin a certain color? I mean, people are walking around with chrome legs and golden arms and things like that. You should be able to have that as a bog standard at least, because we all know there's not much variation on customizing your character post edit. In fact, there's none. Tattoos and piercings. It's it seems to me it's all or nothing. Like you have a face covered in tattoos or an entire body covered in tattoos, but there's no choice on where they go or what they look like. Piercings as well. There's no choice where they go or what they look like or what style they are. And if you look at games like Grand Theft Auto 5 perhaps or Saints Row 2, you can always change that later on. And you can 
you can decide what goes on your body and where. Was it a dragon tattoo on the shoulder? Is it a skull on the knee? That kind of thing. And I think that should be available to us straight off the bat in Cyberpunk, whether it be in the editing of your character, the creation of your character, or post-creation, like in a tattoo shop or a piercing shop. Even with the nails, the female characters and the male characters have got the option of having long nails, short nails, and decorated nails. You should be able to go somewhere and edit that on your body. And you can. So for a AAA title of this caliber, or what was meant to be a AAA title of this caliber, I think straight off the bat, looking at this from opening the box and playing it, it's it started to deflate me straight away and then I saw the bugs, but we're not going to talk about them just now. In Skyrim, you can change your character straight off the bat. You can go um, to someone in a certain town and you can change your entire body. That was added later, so hopefully Cyberpunk will have this feature added later as well. Um, in Saints Row 2, you could go to... Uh, a plastic surgeon and change your body as if you were changing your body or creating your character at the start of a game. So complete clean slate, change who you want to be. That's pretty cool. Another thing that's a bit deflating about Cyberpunk is that when you spend a lot of time creating your character, like I said about other games, you are locked into a first person perspective and you cannot see your character in the third person view unless you are looking at yourself in a mirror in your inventory or the very last mission of the game, uh, the very last cut scene of the game. That's the only time you see your character. And I know they cut these scenes, the third person scenes out, um, probably to speed up production. But in my opinion, they have to bring these back because it, it, it adds immersion. I know they want to talk about first person immersion, but you want to grow attached to that character and you're not going to grow attached to your character unless you can see that character doing things like pretty cool things like the trailer. You're jumping in and out of cars, you're shooting at people. They need to bring these back, make it a really cool looking game. So lacking in editing, lacking in creation straight off the bat, lacking in any type of view for your character it's it's pretty flat there's not enough spice there that's that's what i'm trying to get at there's not that's when you're having a good curry but there's not enough kick that's what the creation of the the character is like at the moment there's just not enough oomph and i hope you know what i mean by that if you if you're happy that is brilliant more power to you you're you're happy with what you have grand but i know a lot of people aren't and they want a bit of variation and a bit of addition to that game I am very, very invested in this game. I bought all the limited edition stuff for this game, including chairs and consoles and collection. And I was very, very upset when I got this game for obvious reasons. But it is what it is. Okay. I think if we're going to pick a clear winner of the games that I have listed in this video, it's still going to be Saints Row 2. I know I said Fallout 4 was good because you could see your character in the third person view and in the dialogue options. And the graphics are a lot better than Saints Row 2. Uh, well, yeah, they're a lot better. But Saints Row 2 is, is, is the winner because you can see your character interact with people in cutscenes. They're fighting, the emotion on their face. It's pretty damn good for the time it came out. You have to remember that. Very, very good um, in terms of that. So Saints Row 2 didn't only win the amount of permutations for character selection and customization, but in my opinion, they're winning the overall for the videos I've posted out there. I know there's other games out there that I've played before, like Mass Effect, who have character customization, and there are really good um, games out there that show your character. Mass Effect is actually a pretty good one, and I'm a bit upset that I haven't included it in this video, because wow, what a game that was. And uh, in terms of character customization, I I can think I can remember, it's pretty pretty good. And you actually saw a character as well, so probably should have added this in here, but you know, um, that's what hindsight's for. But anyway, guys, if there's anything that you want to add um, or any uh, advice, feel free to post in the comments below. Um, I will be posting more videos soon, um, depending on what time I have for work and things like that. Um, hopefully, say one to two videos a week. I'm going to try and keep that. If I can't, really sorry. 
If you have any uh, suggestions or anything that you want to know about certain games or a comparison between games, shout me and I'll see what I can do. But until then, have a fantastic new year and keep powering on with those games and I'll catch you next time.